Welcome Platform Con attendees. This session is about how Portworks by Pure Storage built their own internal developer platform so that they can get more work done. My name is Eric Shanks. I'm a Principal Technical Marketing Manager, and I'm joined by the star of our show, Charu Gopal. Charu, would you mind introducing yourself? Hello, everyone. Myself, Charu Dutt Gopal. I'm the DevOps and Engineering Efficiency Architect for Portworks. Thanks, Charu. So our audience already knows we built an IDP. Uh, let's not waste any time here. Maybe you can start with why we built an IDP. Thank you, Eric. Let me get started. So when you start looking at the engineering efficiency of, the, of, of your team, uh, there are certain things which, we need to, which you need to uh, look at to measure how they are doing, which is cycle duration, the time taken from start to completion, the deployment rate, how often and how long the deployments take, review efficiency, which is um, you know, time taken from uh, review to merge, right? And the build duration, uh, the time taken to compile and build the code. And like last but not the least is the cloud quality, which is the percentage of code that is being tested using our unit test cases, functional tests, etc. And when we started looking at some of these metrics, we started seeing problems in some of the areas with respect to on-prem cloud and infrastructure management, complex testing metrics, which is you know where we had to test on many clouds, multiple distros, multiple kernels, the CACD pipeline management, and last but not the least, product and code security. Right, so we had 180 plus or 200 plus kernel combinations which we wanted to test every day for every new change which were coming in, and our R&D engineers were stressed out. So, uh, what prompted us to build this IDP? Before we even get started working on the solution, based on the interviews we had done so far, we built an expectation matrix, right? And the you know, the problem which were evident in front of us was uh, the on-prem infrastructure which was not reliable. Uh, then, you know, we wanted to reduce the burden from developers and QA to wait for uh, testbed deployments to be completed and also to wait for get stable testbeds, right? And the next one was CICD. Engineers were spending a lot of time triaging issues, trying to understand what's going on, trying to understand what the, the success rate, where they need to spend time in fixing the test, etc. And the last one is uh, product security. We want security to be the first class citizen and you know, we, we want security to be considered even when you start uh, um, uh, the design phase of your uh, software engineering. So we wanted to left shift a lot of process and make it very easy for engineers to go ahead and scan their images, look at the best practices and adopt as part of their um, you know, development process. So that's what prompted us to build an IDP for Portworks, Portwork Engineering, um, innovation called Ato Studio. Awesome. So we gave our IDP its own custom name since we'd custom built it. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what Atos does for us. So Atos has multiple feathers in its hat. And uh, what you're seeing here is a few important ones which made huge impact. Let's get to the first one, Atos Private Cloud. Have you ever wondered when you go ahead and uh, do a deployment on AWS Cloud, uh, like what is the resource being used, whether the hardware resource uh, is free, whether you're getting enough memory and uh, CPU, et cetera? You don't really mind. All you do is you click a button and you expect everything to work out of the box. That's exactly the experience what we are giving with Ados Private Cloud. You know, we want our engineers to uh, not to worry about hardware infrastructure, how it is managed, uh, you know, whether it is overloaded or it is under provision. We will manage all those things with the services we are providing like quota management, uh, lease management, right? And we want them to just concentrate on using the services for deploying the test pets and, you know, doing the testing. So the benefits which we are giving with respect to uh, ATOS private cloud is efficient infrastructure management, optimal resource usage, enhanced pipeline stability, high performance test beds, and uh, the impact is huge. We, we, are, we have saved more than $1 million last year because of the best practices we, are, uh, we have adopted um, uh, with private cloud. We have more than 11,000 high performance virtual machine operational at all time, helping our engineers to test what works uh, and, and scale to the limit they need. Our next one uh, is ATOS Environment as a Service, uh, and a need of IDP was much more evident in this area. Whole engineering team, DevOps, QA, Dev, they were spending a lot of time either in preparing the testbed or waiting for the testbed to be prepared by the DevOps team, right? So we, our uh, support metrics were huge 
we had to test uh, on multiple cloud platforms and the the problem which every company face is you know there are multiple automation frameworks there are multiple deployment architectures which folks are using and there is no one way of doing the deployments right so some of these are tribal knowledge which um, you know folks doesn't even want to remember those command line parameters that's when we built this self service model called atos environment as a service which is a flagship uh, feature of atos studio where uh, our engineers they'll come they'll you know come to a portal then select the kind of deployment they need and then you know use it seamlessly um, across the board uh, whether it is on prem cloud wherever they want to do the deployments they'll use our portal and we give this hybrid cloud experience the impact this has created we have saved more than uh, 20000 engineering hours um, after we uh, launched the services and um, more importantly we have reduced uh, cloud cost by 60% as we are left shifting a lot of deployments to our private cloud rather than going to the public cloud the next one is atos stream pipelines one may even think that why do we need an idp for running pipelines see the motto here is not just running pipelines the motto here is bringing the visibility for engineers to understand where the issue is coming and you know categorize between an infrastructure issue test issue or a product issue just by looking at a dashboard atos gives all that capability and drastically reduces the time which our engineers um, spend to triage the issues and one of the uh, feature which i'm very happy to talk about is our unintended distro pipelines um you know as i told earlier we have we support numerous number of um distro distributions and with that we have a lot of kernels to be tested so uh, we had a dedicated team who were uh, you know testing all these different kernel combinations that's when we started um you know working on unattended distro where uh, you know uh, we have automated we have with this engine which actually for all the distributions we support it will look for kernels new kernels which is really which are getting released and we pick up those uh, kernels build the required modules and automatically qualify port works on the, all these kernels so the impact is you know we don't have the dedicated team sitting and doing this uh, manual effort everything is automated unattended and uh, our unattended distro pipeline is orchestrated to uh, you know generate this report and publish the report as well this is awesome charu Uh some people attending platform com might be trying to understand platform engineering and IDPs. Uh hopefully this is another like nudge in the direction of look we're getting a lot of benefits out of these in, in terms of cost savings and as well as man hours. Um so I think this is great information for them. How about actually how we built it? Uh what kind of architecture are we using? We're we using the public cloud or we using the private cloud? What's the deal? Okay, let's talk about the deployment architecture. Uh, one may say that you know if you want uh, stability uh, you should always go ahead and deploy your production grade applications in uh, in cloud i kind of disagree with that you know if your architecture is right if you are designed and using the right tools then you can uh, uh, you know achieve the same with your uh, private cloud as well so that's what we are doing here so we have two vSphere clusters two kubernetes clusters um, you know staying them one is the source cluster and the destination cluster and we are using the portworks metro dr solution for uh, replicating the uh, data across the source and the destination cluster we call it as a blue and green cluster we fail over every month and it's been more than um, one and a half year we are running this solution and we never had a downtime we do our dr activity every month we fail over from blue cluster to green cluster green cluster to blue cluster uh, and you know with just a, a flip of a dns um, change um, you know um, we we start um, uh, using the other cluster which is up and running yeah just to fill in a couple gaps here Portworks, if you're not familiar with us, are is a software-defined storage platform specifically designed for Kubernetes. So we're actually using our own platform in our IDP to help us build new features for our existing platform. So we're kind of dog-fooding things here. Uh, the feature we're specifically talking about here is our disaster recovery solution, which allows us to fail over not only this the persistent data in our persistent volumes, but also the stateful applications and the metadata about the pods and deployments and things as well. Uh Charu maybe you can talk to us about a, a few more stats that we've had. Let's talk about the stats and uh, scale of operations. You can build world class uh, products applications but if you don't have anyone using then uh, you know literally it is meaningless. 
Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the stats, right? So uh, if you see here, we have around 11,000 virtual machines operational at any given point of time. And the important thing to note here is the churn rate um, uh, the, or automation frameworks, they actually go ahead and deploy at least five to 6,000 virtual machines, new virtual machines every day. And we have a super stable private cloud supporting this one. Uh, in any quarter, um, we deploy easily 50,000 test beds, which accounts to more than 250 to 300,000 virtual machines deployed uh, every year. And from the cloud cost saving perspective, we have drastically reduced our cloud footprint. You can see uh, from this charts, um, you know, uh, due to the private cloud and EAS improvements, we gradually increasing uh, the on-prem deployments and similarly the cloud uh, cost is also getting reduced. This is my favorite stat. It might be one of my favorite stats of all times. The number of our deployments is actually increasing over time, but our cloud costs are decreasing because of our IDP. Uh, super important figure here uh, that shows the importance of an in, uh, internal developer platform. Uh, we've got a few minutes left. Can you do a quick demo for us? Let's quickly get into the demo. This is our portal, Ato Studio, and this is what the environment as a service feature we were talking about. So engineers, they come here, they select what product they want to use, and they select where they want to do the deployment. This is what the hybrid cloud experience I was talking about earlier. And um, we have a lot of a starting state. Starting state is nothing but a deployment type uh, which one can select and get the test bed. So let's say I want to deploy a test bed with, uh, you know, Kubernetes installed. I can select the option, go ahead with the default values or change the Kubernetes version, CPU, et cetera, as per their need and just go ahead and click on the reply button that's all that's all they need to do and depending upon the kind of test bed they are deployed um you know uh, the test bed will be ready within a few minutes and uh, the user will get a slack notification for the purpose of the demo i have picked up a test bed um uh, which is already deployed so this has information about uh, the test bed what is the test bed and you know even users can go ahead and extend the lease uh, of the test bed from here. So the by default, uh, you know, we, we, keep, we it comes with a three day lease, but if one thinks that then they want to extend this uh, uh, test bed for certain amount of time, they can go ahead and extend the lease as well. And uh, we have a Reaper which uh, runs um, every few minutes, uh, which will actually go ahead and, uh, you know, delete the test beds uh, once the lease time is completed. Right. And we give granular information about what are the different steps which got executed uh, as part of this, um, uh, you know, um, uh, test execution of the workflow deployment as well. So this is our flagship uh, feature, which is uh, environment as a service. Um, the next one which I want to touch base is on the private cloud tab. So uh, as I told earlier, right, so we keep track of all kind of deployments uh, engineer do. So let's say that, uh, you know, let me take an example of my uh, director. Um, who has a lot of folks under him, he can just go ahead and select and see what are the amount of test beds uh, or what are the amount of uh, virtual machines which is getting installed, deployed, and being used by his team. So if you see this, this is very uh, evident. There are 821 active test beds uh, operational at this point of time, which is approximately uh, 4,000 virtual machines. And also we give, you know, ability for um, management to, uh, or, or the engineers to um, filter the test beds depending upon whether it is an uh, on-prem, which is vCenter or GKE, AKS, EKS, whatever it is, they can they can select that option and they can see, um, you know, uh, how many test beds they have and they can even manage the test bed. They can just go ahead and delete the test bed depending upon um, whether they want to keep it or not. Uh, the next one is that, uh, you know, um, which I want to touch base is on the pipeline. So um, as I was, um, as we were discussing earlier, so this is uh, this is where our engineers are coming and are triaging the runs. See the motto, uh, our motto here is not to keep the dashboard green. Our motto here is to make it very simple for the developers to understand what what's the issue is. So as I told earlier, you can see here, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are problems, um, uh, test which has failed due to um, test issue. That's where it is coming in red, uh, and the blue one are the ones which are failed with uh, infra issues. So um, you know it is easy for engineers to understand what's happening, categorize, and uh, you know debug the test uh, right from the dashboard. So when they click on the dashboard, it actually gives information about what are the different tests which got executed as well. Charu, 
please accept my sincere thanks for spending some time with us to explain our internal development platform with PlatformCon. And thank you to the attendees. Hopefully you've learned something from our experiences building an IDP. And then please enjoy a PlatformCon.